<laughs> Welcome. This is uh, the laugh lecture, the one about Asian American representation. Woo it has been si it it has been over ten years uh, since we started laugh, and this is now laugh sixty two. We had a little hiatus, but can you believe it's taken us till sixty two as Asians to talk about Asian representation? It's a shame. Yes, but uh, we're in nineteen. 2019, so we're good. We're gonna go all the way back to over 100 years ago, Asian portrayals in Hollywood, as soon as films were starting to be made, you know, Asians were not portrayed in Hollywood because they're portrayed by white people. That's what we call yellow face. So that's usually when non-Asians play Asians, specifically when they put on makeup and prosthetics and take a bad accent and all that sort of stuff to uh, be racist and uh, yeah show Asians. So this goes all the way back to 1915, you know, silent film, you know, they couldn't even get an Asian baby. So, but you know, that's ancient history, right? That's like over a hundred years ago. Nah, it still continues in the 21st century. That's Jim Sturgis as Hey Ju Chang. Hey, you do not look Korean. That's Cloud Atlas in 2012, people. And you know, Scarlett Johansson as Major Motoko Kusanagi. No, she's supposed to be Asian, but apparently they were even going to digitally make her face more Asian. <gasps> what? Um, but I don't know if they went through with that. So AIs before Asians. Her face Asians. is fine as it is. That's right. Or straight up whitewashing. That's like replacing Asian roles with white ones. So Aloha 2015 with Emma Stone playing Allison Ng. No. Uh, supposed to be a half Asian character. No, sorry. She, she said she was sorry at the Golden Globe. Sorry, not sorry. She got paid. All right. So <laughs> Asian Americans in Hollywood now, we're talking about like actual Asians that are trying to break through in Hollywood. Always seen as foreigners. Did you know? Asian, there was Asian male that was sex symbol in America. Sesue Hayakawa. This is taken circa 1918. He was a sex symbol. Apparently, he predated Valentino even. And uh, white women were starting to get very excited, and the white men did, were not down with that. Uh, that's when talking films started coming out, but apparently his accent was too thick, so they just got rid of him. Anna Mae Wong, you probably don't know. Uh, but she was born in L.A., so she's legit an Asian-American uh, in the film Toll of the Sea, which was the first color feature in Hollywood that wasn't hand-painted, actually could be put in a projector. Um, but she just wasn't able to get good roles. She's frustrated by the stereotypes. Uh, she lost the role of the good earth to a white woman, and that went on to win awards. Uh, and then the first Asian to win an Oscar was Miyoshi Umeki, uh, born in Japan, but uh, moved to Los Angeles. Uh, so she won 1957 for, in the film Sayonara, you know, but playing, of course, that kind of stereotypical role. But she did win a supporting actress for that. Now I'm going to get into kind of, okay, how have Asian Americans, specifically gender-wise, how have they been portrayed? Usually, we're going to start with Asian American women because, you know, women seen as objects, I think Americans are more ready for that than they were for Asian men. So we're going to start with the Asian women because Asian women are submissive. This is Mantis from Gardens of the Galaxy, like, in, like, just a couple years ago, right? Playing that submissive, kind of funny uh, Asian character who's freaking an alien. And then the dragon lady, that's, that's, that's our girl Lucy Liu, right there, it's like, is the idea of the sexually exotic creature, you know, submissive and just an animal in the bed, just the male fantasy is playing into that. Now we're going to get to uh, Asian men. So I'm going to have, you know, I have a little bit of angst here uh, because they're freaking, they're only portrayed in these ways. One, as inarticulate, like they can't speak English, or if they are, they're unable to speak powerfully. This is an Asian American guy who was only able to get the role to play uh, a guy who couldn't speak English. Uh, Jin and Lost, great series. Uh, they did great things with him, but that was the portrayal of the, of the Asian, the only Asian man there. Uh, 
or they're asexual, that's long dip dong right there, not sexually attractive, okay, to the opposite sex. And then just freaking weird, right? Just, <laughs> my gosh. That, so Asian men, ugh, nah, right? Not is that sexy. Jong? That Ken is Ken Jong in community. He's community. Yes, uh, like no elf. He's apparently an elf there. But, hey, we have had progress, people. Did you know, this is really only in, like, the past year or two years. Uh, Aziz Ansari, Master of None, he made history in 2018, people. How long have Asians been in America by becoming the first Asian-American actor to win a Golden Globe for acting in television, a lead role, right? But still in musical comedy, not something serious. The first that we get to a lead, this is the closest. Asian Americans still do not have any wins in the lead category for actor or actress. And it's Golden Globe, so it's not Oscars, and it's not even Emmy. So, that's uh, Golden Globe for lead actress Killing Eve, the 2019 drama. <laughs> and can you believe it? Crazy Rich Asians it has now been the highest grossing romantic comedy in the past 10 years. Right, so Woo! surpassed Ow. 2009's The Proposal, so it's the number one rom-com in the past year. Know. Right, with an Asian American cast as Americans, not as foreigners, right? Now, we've made some progress, you know? We woke, unless we're talking about sexual preferences, unfortunately. So there was this great podcast, it's great to listen to, uh, came out just April of this year, it's called A Very Offensive Rom-Com. So basically, tells a story about this Asian American woman who felt pretty woke and stuff, but uh, someone kind of called her out on the fact that she only was dating white guys. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, no, no, wait, I'm woke. It's just a preference. But then, you know, she ran into some internet trolls, some Asian American uh, men's rights angst. You know, uh, you felt a little bit of my angst back here about, you know, Asian a -A. men portrayal, inarticulate, asexual, just freaking weird. There's a lot of angst there, you know? So she became the target of a lot of the trolling. Trolling is bad, but still is coming from somewhere. Uh -huh. So they're basically like checking her a little bit. Like, why, why won't you go for an Asian guy? Mm -hmm. And then... She tried and it was very hard and apparently there's research to back this up that they, this is done with rats, you know, but still, you know, because you can't do the experiments on humans, that would be unethical. But apparently, whatever you're- Are there Asian rats? Whatever yeah. you're- <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? What? Master Splinter, you know? No, no. Master Splinter? No, no. But, okay, so in the experiment, um, these rats, basically, they would like have on little jackets or something like that, so their first sexual encounter would be so powerful, they wouldn't be able to ejaculate without their, the jackets on. Because they had the jackets what on kind of jacket when, <laughs> when they were ejaculating. Jackets ejac with the ejaculating. Ejaculating. Yes. Ejac but they couldn't without the jacket. <laughs> like, what's going on? Right? They, they got used to it was with it the jacket. jacket. They got they used to it because that was their formative experience. So, so they've done other experiments apparently oh, with different odors okay. as well. So whatever was in their first sexual experience, it became so powerful it kind of made the map for their That's future so sexual preferences. So they, they are hypothesizing um, Whatever our first sexual encounters are, if it's those the media. really become, and yeah, if you include with media, uh, those are more powerful than we think. Mm -hmm. um, that we can't just um, jump to a different races easily, mm -hmm. which we think, you know, who we choose as sexual partners is Asian so rats. subjective, <laughs> but actually Asian it's rats. very much shaped by the culture and what's around you. Mm -hmm. So when, very scary. So thing. when they say he's got a type, it's because his formative sexual experience mm -hmm. yes. possibly yes. was jacketed to this. Yeah, oh, it was jacketed. <laughs> it got jacked. So this is a good case, I believe. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Jesus and God—they had it right. You shouldn't be going around because you know. 
when you're hoeing around, it's gonna affect your, you know, marriage. Just have an orgy the first time. Future. Yeah. Yeah. When you're scared, oh, you're gonna you want to always need all these people. So How are you gonna get married? So, um, but wait, 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 so wait, 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 all that aside, now we're trying to rewrite the script now, so now the film for tonight, Always Be My Navy. It is 2019, folks. And a major Ooh, studio ah, film ah. with an Asian American woman and an Asian American man as the romantic leads. Wow. Wow. In America. Wow. As Americans. Wow. Written by Asian American leads. It was written by these two and another white guy. Thing. But these two, right? <laughs> And is directed by an Asian American woman, Nan Chatka Khan, who Moscow. also has yeah. written uh, or was She's the showrunner, showrunner, the showrunner the behind uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have arrived. Now we're ready for yeah. that movie we've been watching. All right. All right.